for some people because you reap what you sow, and that's where I'm going today with the word of God. Um, the way you treat people, how you be treated. And so, amen, you should treat people the way you would want to be treated. Amen. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Amen. But I'm going to go to it quickly because of time's sake, y'all. We enjoyed our time um, away. We had about six days, amen, in New Orleans. God bless. We've never been before um, and never going back unless it's a ministry assignment. Just, just bottom line. My atmosphere matters to me. It does. When we got out of there, it was like the sun got bright. I was like, get me back to Texas. It was like we was in a dark dungeon. I was watching where I was stepping. I said, I'm just so superstitious. And I want to get out of there before Friday the 13th. I said, Lord, we didn't came on the wrong week. Everywhere you look, writings and sayings and come in and let me show you your future. I'm like, I, Lord, writings on your steps somewhere. I, I was walking. I was just, we was just tripping out. I was like, Lord, get us out here. And um, we stopped by Bourbon Street, and we just kind of saw a little bit. And I was like, let us just keep some of y'all. It's okay with y'all, but it's all right. I just, my, I just, you know, I just thank God made it out of New Orleans alive <laughs> and still saved and <laughs> sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. It's, um, yeah, so um, we saw some great things, great food and all of that great stuff and a time of rejuvenation. But like I say, unless ministry calls me back, I, I, that's off of the, bu the bucket list um, for me. I can't handle seeing homeless people on the streets. I know some of y'all can just drive right past them. I just can't take it. I just, I mean, for whatever reason that they are there, I just, I don't want, it depresses me to see people depressed. It depresses me to see people hungry and wanting things and, and, and just one man had a sign, y'all, and the sign says, give a crack of some cheese. And Pastor Harris was like, you see this man's sign? What does that sign read right there? You say, I'm like, don't even look his direction because y'all know if you look one time, they'd be all the way like. <laughs> they start following you. Be like, I'm not going to make no eye contact at all. But um, it's definitely different than it is. They walk a lot. They walk almost everywhere they go. Some of them, they drive buses. It's totally different than, than Tyler. But I thank God for um, experiencing New Orleans, um, Louisiana. Praise God. New Orleans, however you want, how you want, it. and we just got picked out. They just sometimes you just look saved, and I just never want to be the type that people look at you and be like, "God bless your sister." I'm like, I, "Do I just look that saved?" You go in the restaurant, "God bless your sister." They give you a receipt, they write on there, "God bless you." Like you ain't that saved like that. You just trying to get a good tip because you didn't figure that we just you just look saved. You just don't fit in no more. But I thank God for time away, amen, and we're back to the pulpit to preach the word of God. Are y'all glad to have us back, amen. So I want to talk to you about how powerful your mouth is. We were talking about seeding and what seeding is. If y'all could give me 30 good minutes of your time and calm down just a little bit to digest the word of God, I will bless you today. Is that okay? Yeah. To talk to you about your seed and how powerful, amen, and we are live, amen, how powerful your mouth is. Your mouth can get you in trouble and your mouth can get you out of trouble. I want you to understand that seeding is not just in finances, but your mouth mouth is a seed. I'm going to start. I'm going to start real early. I'm just going to start. Your mouth, what you say determines your future. And I'm going to prove it by the word of God. And some of y'all, God told me to show you why your blessings are held up. He said, it's not because you're not a sower. He says, because you, you sow bad seed with your mouth. Amen. Okay. I got a two member church. And so you're wondering where your harvest is, but you put your seed in the ground, but your mouth was not disciplined enough to allow the seed to come to pass. You put in positive seed and your mouth turned around and rejected what you had put in the ground because we are talkative people, most of us. We, 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 we have learned how to talk negative more than we have learned how to talk positive. It has been modeled before us in our households and the people that we surround ourselves around, amen, to talk negative and we don't even know it. That's why even if you don't have it, you have to speak things as though it's not as though that they were. Somebody shout, my mouth is a seed. And some of y'all spitting out negative seeds everywhere you go, negative seeds everywhere you go. This ain't going to work for me. I ain't going to have this. They ain't. Matter of fact, we don't just speak over our lives. We speak over the lives of people who are connected with us. 
they ain't going to have it. How you going to use your mouth as a weapon to speak over my life what I will not have and what I could not be? That's why you have to surround yourself around supportive people, people who know how to speak positive in your life and not always looking at the negative thing. Somebody shout again, my mouth, my mouth. say it is a seed. Say it again, my mouth is a seed. I want to prove it to you in the word of God so I can get this out of the way. Genesis, the first chapter, and some of y'all already know where I'm going. We're going to start at the first verse. Genesis, the first chapter, and the first verse. And I want to let you know that there is nothing moves or nothing changes, nothing transforms until you speak. The rest of y'all are going to come up in just a minute. Nothing changes until you speak. Amen. Nothing changes until God speaks over you and concerning you. And some of you are what you've been speaking. Come on, it's not of God. It's making you further away, taking you further away from your blessing than closer. The first verse says, in the beginning, in the beginning, before all of us was here, all of us created. Is everybody there? The heaven God created, the heaven and the earth. So that's how we know with all of these theologies and all of these methodologies and all these different ologies you want to call it to want to know how was things created. The Bible tells us in the beginning, come on, not man, it said God created the heaven and the earth. Not scientists, not rocks and stuff up in space coming together and everything landed in place. It was a masterful God that created the heavens and the earth. The second verse says, for those who are word lovers and not just emotional praisers, it says, and the earth was without form or void, which means there was nothing upon the face of the earth. It was without form and it was without void. And darkness was up on the face of the deep, meaning it was a dark place. I love this next part says, and the spirit of God and the spirit of God. I come to tell you it's not until the spirit of God move up on you that things change. The spirit of God, which is life. The spirit of God is life. The spirit of God moved up on the face of the waters. The third verse says, and God said, which means God spoke. Nothing came into existence in a dark place, a place that was void, come on, a place that was without light until God said, until God spoke, until the spirit of God moved up on the face of the earth. And some of y'all are doing things, but God has not said it. And if God has not said it for my five-member church on a Sunday morning, if God has not said it, there will be no spirit in it. There will be no life in it. And some of us, we're doing things, but God has not said it. But if he said it, there will be light. There will be light. Let there, he said, let there be light. When he said it, and there was light. Some of y'all don't have what you should have because you won't say it. You ain't no a prophet to come and tell you what God already told you. You always wait on confirmations and you're stuck and stagnant. I'm trying to help a church today. And there was light. Fourth verse says, and God saw the light. So after you speak comes manifestation. I wish I had the right. <laughs> After he said it for the word lovers, then he saw. He spoke it, and it says the second thing after you speak it, you begin to see it. It says he saw the light, and then he said it was good. And God then divided the light from the darkness. Five, let's keep going and pick it up just a little bit. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, which lets me know that we serve a God who's not a God of confusion. We serve a God who is a God of order, who puts things in place. And anytime people operate out of order, we're going against the law of God. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Okay. So some of y'all wonder why you can't be around certain people because they're so disorganized. And God, that is not an attribute of God. God works in order, but there are some people who cannot function until it's disorder. There are some people who cannot function unless it's dysfunction. There are some people who can't function until they start a fight. There are some people who can't function until they start gossip. There are some people who can't function and they always got drama. They always got questions. They always got attitude. They always start stuff because they can't function in peace and order. Woo! That was a lot to get that out. When this characteristic of God said that darkness and light cannot exist in the same space. And since it can't exist in the same space, I have to make a separatism. I got to separate. And I don't understand how people full of light can hang all the time around people full of dark. That has to be something y'all don't want to talk about that separates you from the darkness. The Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate. Can I talk to them? Yes, but why have your lightness turned into darkness when your lightness to be able to bring light to a dark situation? It says that it was separated because we serve a God of order. I am one person, I will admit it, I can't function out of order. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? I, I can't cook in my kitchen until it's clean. Okay. I'll try to help some of y'all. You shouldn't be able to make love in a dirty room. Because there's out of ordinance. Come on. When I separate my clothes, I don't put black, white, and light colors together because there's a separate thing. Because what happens is the darkness bleeds on the light. Yeah. <laughs> Even the kids don't understand the word today. When you're washing clothes, you don't put dark clothes with the light clothes, I'm going to tell you now, your mama going to get you. If you go in and get her famous white t-shirt and your daddy going to get you and then you take your black dirty pants and you put it in with white and black when you come out, that white shirt looks gray, you're going to have some problems. So it should start as a child to teach your children how to separate clothes. Y'all don't want to talk, right? Because separating clothes teaches them order. Separating clothes teaches them discipline. Y'all don't want to see it like that. Separating clothes let them know that dark and light don't mix. They don't have no fellowship. They're going to help me. They're going to help me. Y'all going to help me. The enemy want to keep some of y'all from church because you think the word of God is rules. But the word of God is principles that we abide by. And this new generation is taking the Bible and ripping it to pieces so they can have a new way of living and be free in sin, but not at the kingdom church. I got to live right. I believe in grace because I've done some stuff that if it had not been for God's grace, but I would not abuse his grace. Y'all don't want to talk right. I, I don't want to be walking and be like, is this my last time? That's when you lose the fear of God to do what you want to do. Amen. Y'all don't want to talk right this morning. But I, when I mess up, I'm quickly, Lord, how can I repent? Lord Jesus, wash me, clean me. I didn't mess up. I'm not comfortable in dark places. Let me get depressed. I'm not comfortable in depression. How can you lay there for so long? I got to find some light somewhere. If my whole house is dark, I got to get to church. I got to read the word. I got to open the windows because depression can't have me. And some of y'all, you're so weak. Because you become comfortable in dark situations. Think I got a right church on a Sunday morning. Is you become comfortable with the light off. I give this illustration all the time. Pastor Harris, I'll be in a room cooking because, hey, I believe in saving on the light bill. There ain't but two of us in this, this house, and we ain't going to have every light that he like to cut on every light in the house. Amen. And then when we get the light bill, talking about why the light bill so hard, because you got three lights on in the house, it ain't but two people. I think he gets bored sometimes because he wants to act like it's imaginary people in the house. I'm like, it ain't but two of us. Why you got the TV on in the living room and the TV on in the, in, the, in the bedroom. You got the light on in the bathroom. I said, why are you in all of these rooms and you only one person? I'm sick of cleaning up behind every room. You either be in this room. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? Any wives know what I'm talking about? 
shoes in that room, shoes over here, clothes, clothes over here. Then, and then the man want to act like he's picking up something with the trash can. Real, wait till you come around the corner, start shaking the trash. And, Pastor Harris has made dish water, but I never saw the dishes get back up in, in the cabinet. I'm like, I thought he washed these dishes. I'm like, them. And then he's famous for taking, men don't put food in containers in the refrigerator. They take the whole, the whole bowl, the whole pot. I'd be like, can you put that food up now? I didn't, eat, like, I didn't cook it for you. You can put it up. I go the next morning, big steel pots, and took up all the food still all in the, and I'm like, what in the, that's what to-go containers are for. That's just a little difference that we have. But I thank God that I'm not comfortable in disorder. How many of y'all thank God? I'm not comfortable in messy situations. Even if the mess is on me, y'all don't want to talk right. <laughs> because we good at pointing out other folks' mess. We good at saying what he doing, what she doing. But when it comes to our mess, we don't want nobody to touch our mess. Leave it alone. Let me dance all of it now, but we can smell it. So the Bible says there is a separation. I'm not going to go there because we on live. So y'all God bless us on live. Y'all just saved the church. And the evening and the morning were the first day, because I'm still talking about things don't happen until you speak. The sixth verse, let's keep reading. And God did what? He waved his hands. He spent around. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Which means that if God would not have spoken and been such a, 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 a big-minded God, that we would have water on land. Amen. That there would be no separation. But he said, let it be divided. The waters, let it divide the waters from the waters. The seventh verse says... And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Eighth verse, let's keep reading. And God called the firmament what? And the evening and the morning were the second day. Let's read down to the ninth verse. And God yelled. God laid hands. And he said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land, here we go, be appear. And it was so. Things don't move until you open your mouth. Things don't change until you open your mouth. Some of y'all are stuck because you don't speak it. Some of y'all don't have what you should have because you don't speak it. My job today is to show you why your harvest is not here. Tell somebody I got to start opening my mouth. I'm going to teach you balance on the next part because some of us talk too much Amen. about the wrong things. Amen. This proves to us that nothing is done until God speaks it. Nothing changed. I'm trying to get it in your head until God spoke it. After he spoke it, it was manifestation. I want to say this is that your harvest whatever or your harvest is whatever you plant. Amen. Where my harvest? What you plant? Lord, where my harvest? It's the art of reaping and sowing. Where my harvest? Where did you plant? Why everybody so mean to me? Are you mean? Where my harvest at? What, what seed did you put out? Because I, I, I saw something I posted on Facebook and it says that you will be surprised and you'll stop smiling at these people who you know talked about you. Let me tell you, my Bible told me to bless them that curse me. I'm going to smile whether you talk about me or not. And some of y'all, your mouth gets you in trouble just because he don't like you. And I turn around, I don't like them too. That's not an attribute of God. Amen. Your mouth gets you in trouble. Amen. But I'm going to teach you how to get your mouth, somebody shout, out of trouble. Whatever you're looking for in your harvest, it will come from whatever you planted. I want to tell you today that your mouth is blocking your blessings. Not what you're giving, but you give and you uproot. You put it down and you pull it back up with your mouth. You say you heal, but let a symptom show up. 
That's not faith. You say you delivered, let that, just one thing change in your body. And the enemy knows if I alter the symptoms, I can alter their faith. <laughs> I can leave right there. I can leave. If I can alter their situation, I can alter their faith. If, if I can make them feel like it ain't no hope out, I can change their faith. And some of y'all, because faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. If you don't operate in true faith, you're going to operate in symptoms. The doctor said, and I got a symptom. They said, I'm going to be blessed with my bank account. Got a symptom. Symptom. It said, I'm going to be blessed, but my symptoms don't show what God said. Faith says, I don't care what I see, y'all don't want to talk right. I know what God said. Some of y'all operate off of symptoms versus faith. Amen. I'm going to help y'all in just a moment. If y'all can get that volleyball real quick. Y'all know that's my favorite sport, so y'all finna come with it because I want to keep the kids up. Try to and work with the adults today. I want to tell you that your kids are a seed. And if you don't invest in them, the world will. You don't invest in them, their friends will. Okay, y'all don't want to clap because some of us are selfish and we're not concerned about the next generation. You ain't going to be here forever. The Lord only point, uh, uh, you know, promised us, what, 70 years? You ain't going to be here forever. What about the people that are kids that are coming up behind you? And what you invest in them is how the generations continue to move forward. But if you invest in mess, that's what you're going to get out. And a lot of parents get mad because their child only repeat what they heard their parents say. I wish it was an exit way right out this door. Don't get mad at your child in public because they said something they heard come out of your mouth. And then you tell them, I'm grown, you don't say that. Oh, well, when they get grown, they're going to do the same thing. And we create, I got little claps and it's okay, a vicious cycle. A vicious cycle. A vicious cycle. Because it's not just what you say, it's also what you do. So if you don't want to be abused, y'all don't want to talk right. If you don't want nobody to call you an idiot. Because children are seeds. And they see and they hear. They remember. Some of y'all looking. This ain't no beat up message. This is a come up message. They remember what you said. Uh -huh. That's why some conversations are not for children's ears. I only got one clap over here. One clap over there. Some things they should not hear or see about who you don't like on your job, who you don't like at the church, who what you don't like, what was said. You are an immature parent. You are an undisciplined parent. Because at a young age, children, they are protective of their parents until they found out that their parent was wrong about some things. Okay, y'all don't want to... And when they found out you were wrong about some things, you might lose them forever. I'm trying to help some parents. Because the word of God is talking to us today about what we say and how we're hindering our own blessings. So you tell them, you know, don't talk back to me, but you talk back to your husband. You teach them that there is no law of submission and authority, okay? I know y'all going to be quiet because y'all want to hoop today. You talk to him like a dog. Pastor Harris talked about it la last week. And then you think she going to grow up and respect the man? She ain't getting one. Because she heard what you done or vice versa what the man done to the woman. And we, we got to look at kids as seed because whatever we put in them multiplies. A seed multiplies and it's supposed to grow. Whether positive or whether negative, it's going to grow. And so you got a nerve to beat your child for something you done. Which means you mad not at them. You're really mad at yourself. <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk right. Y'all don't want to talk right. 
And I'm not bring, preaching perfectionism. I'm preaching purpose, purpose and realism, if that's what you want to call it, and investing. But I'm so glad my mom got mad a whole bunch of times, but my mama never cussed me out and made me feel like trash. Amen. She never told me I was never going to be nothing. And some of these kids right up in here, some folks then told them, some grown folks, you ain't going to never be nothing. You bad. You don't tell your child that they are bad. Because that gets in that psyche. And once it gets in that psyche, you put a seed in them that's going to grow. So everywhere they're going to go, if my mama told me I'm bad, then I'm going to be bad. Okay, I thought I was going to have the right church. If my daddy told me to sleep with everybody to make myself a man, then I'm going to do what my daddy said do. Investing in seed. To tell your child they'll never get it. They ain't good enough. This youth Sunday, right? Amen. So we helping parents and we're also helping the youth. They ain't going to never be nothing. And when you get mad and when you get angry, the stuff that comes out your mouth is the stuff that they remember 20 years later, 30 years later, they go and try to get a job. But what pops up before them is they don't have self-confidence because the person who raised them talked to them so bad. Y'all not talking around. Made them feel like they can have nothing in life. You don't want nobody to do it to you. Don't do it to nobody. You speak to them. You can be all that you can be. You can have what you want to have. You can live where you want to live. And not just tell them, but show them a way out. Tell them, I went through what I went through, so you won't have to go through it. I went through an abusive relationship, so you better not get in one. I thought we had the right church on a Sunday morning. I mismanaged my money until the parents confessed to some stuff that they messed up. We can't change a generation. I mismanaged my money while we stayed in poverty. I'd rather get weaved than to put, put the lights on in the house. I'd rather look good than to make sure the water stayed on. You bet not raise your kids that way. We got some spiritual sons and daughters in this ministry, and they know I flat-footed stood up, and I told them, you will not be like me. You will be better than me. Even if you don't preach better, you better live better. You better have better. That's what real parents is about. It ain't about preaching better. Manage your money better. Have more than what we have. Y'all don't want to talk right. Supersede me. Get your education where I slapped on some things. I want you to have it. Because I went through. She cut it up. Y'all sorry. I went through so you won't have to go through that. You're not a real parent until you tell your child I messed up and I made some mistakes. And I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made. Why? Because I made it for you. Why? Because I went through it for you. Why you won't be with a no good man? Because I've been there for you. Why you won't accept certain things? Because I've been there already for you. Some of y'all can't say amen. When you accept certain things you teach your kids, it's okay to accept it. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right, Daddy, keep tipping. Y'all don't want to talk right on a Sunday morning. It's all right. He don't come home every night. Now she grew up and she grow up and she marry a man that can't be faithful because she thinks his unfaithfulness is what is susceptible. It's susceptible. It's normal behavior. Y'all acting like guilty folks this Sunday morning. Struggle is not normal. I'm going to say it again. Struggle is not normal. Poverty is not normal. Say what you want. Say what you want. Do what you want. But it's not normal. It's not a way of living when you got more than enough in your hand, but you can't manage it. It ain't normal. It ain't normal. Amen. Some of us are comfortable in the dark, and when the light comes and shines on us, we, we, we don't like that part. Amen. Somebody shout glory. glory. I have to calm myself down. So when God blesses us, 
He sends us a blessing. Who know how to play volleyball for real? If not, you're going to get your head knocked in. Come here. Anybody play volleyball with me? <laughs> they already made us. Amos don't want to play no more. You ain't coming. She made us lose against, lose against another team that was years ago, and I never forgot. He, that was a long time ago. She, was, she made us lose, and I forgot I was a pass. I was like, get off the court. I can play, I can play. I'm like, you please. That ball kept coming up. Boom. I was like, <laughs> she's like, Pastor, I didn't know you had that side. I don't want to play anymore. So it's a, but I love volleyball. But what happens is God sends us seed and he sends us a blessing. And when it comes over, you have what you call blockers. When you open your mouth, God served it to you, but you blocked it with your mouth. You also have another thing, and I want to move into it's called setting, where you take the fingertips and you set the ball to the person. Parents are supposed to set. You're supposed to set your child up. Okay, y'all don't want to clap. They should already, their credit score shouldn't be messed up when they get 18 because you didn't bought Adidas. You got the light bill in their name. You got the water machine in their name. You got errands in their name. I know we got to do what we got to do to survive, but you ought to be thinking about, I was left in this condition, so I'm not going to leave the next generation. I'm going to set them up with a blessing. Amen. What's wrong with our culture? We don't know how to set. We always starting over from nothing. Amen. Mentality. Amen. You ought to already have businesses so that your child won't ever have to work. Amen. Because some people were set up with something. Amen. And there were some people who had to start from scratch to get what they have. But we, everybody ain't got to start from scratch if you got good people who know how to set. Amen. You know how to set? Let's see. Whoop. Let's try it again. Ceiling ain't that high. I got to remember. Oh, go get it. See, I'm not competing against you. I just want to say. Okay. What happens is when the ball is served, you know how to block? You know how to pass, set, and block. Let's try. Try it again. You throw it to me. Oh, let's try it again. Need some more practice. What you saying, Pastor Harris, behind me? The whole idea is to pass. Let's try it again. Yep. Sorry. Too high up. We don't got enough space up here. The whole idea, try it one more time. Woo! I had to catch it. But the whole idea is pass, set, and spike. With your pass, bump, set, and spike. The reason for the set is so that they can knock it out. They can spike it. And some of y'all, y'all passing the ball, but you're not setting it up. Some of y'all, God's trying to bless you, but you're missing the setup. Every time he passed the ball to you, your mouth blocks your blessing. Thank you. I want to play for real at Sonic. Y'all got to set some up. Every time he try to bless you, your mouth blocks it. Why? Because some of us, we don't know when to shut up. Amen. So the little subtopic of the word today is learn how to shut up. Amen. Learn when to be quiet. Learn when you've said too much. Amen. Learn because everything that come in your head should come out your mouth. Is this Bible? Yes, it is. I'm going somewhere today. Everything you think shouldn't be said and you're not mature until you learn how to decipher your thoughts just cause she ugly or you think he ugly it shouldn't come out your mouth and you ought to teach your kids that they don't say everything that they think cause they will and sometimes they tell the truth and you be like oh my god I can't believe they just told that woman that it just come right on out their mouth. So you got to teach them. My husband, Pastor Harris, taught, helped teach my nephew, Micah, not to say everything because kids sometimes don't have a filter. And it wasn't until he told them, he said, Micah, you hurt people when you talk. He said, Uncle, I hurt people when I talk. He said, yes. He said, I don't try. So every time he would do it, he would tell him, Micah, you're hurting people. And it would ring in his mind. It would click to say, I shouldn't say that. I mean, he would say certain things like, you're big. 
Just walk right. So he told you, 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 you big. Yeah, anybody been around? You, you, you. He told somebody she was dating somebody that was like 30 or 40 years old. He's like, is that your father? I said, oh, my God. Oh, is that your father? I said, snatch him back real quick. You don't say that. You don't say everything that come to your mouth. And as adults, if you don't learn it as a child, it's going to be hard. You won't keep a job. You won't keep a marriage. You won't stay at nobody's church. Because your mouth gets you in trouble. You don't know how not to just sit there and be quiet at times. Especially when you know God's bringing something down the pipeway. It's the enemy's job to distract you so bad to make you miss what God is trying to give you through your mouth. If you would have waited 30 seconds later, you might still have your job. It wasn't the devil, it was your mouth. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk. You will have a friend if you wouldn't have let your mouth run off at the mouth with your unforgiving self. Y'all see my shirt? I'm going somewhere. Forgiving. You want forgiveness, but you won't give it to somebody else. The worst leaders are leaders who can't forgive. You cannot lead nobody if they are making offense to you one time and you mad for the rest of their life. You can't lead them. They can't want to hear nothing you say and you won't hear nothing that they say. You got to learn how to forgive. Yeah. Teach your kids to forgive. Yeah. You mad at Sister Sally. We ain't got one in here yet by that name. Yeah. Your child didn't hurt you mad when they come to church. You looking at Sally and your teen looking at her too. Because even as an adult, I don't play about my mama. And as a child, if my mama said somebody in the church, I'm trying to help y'all today, said something to her in children's church, as uh, little as I was, five and six years old, I was doing this. And if they said something, yanking, looking at them crazy, because we impose our dissatisfactions onto kids. We can't be mad by ourselves. We always got to be like Lucifer and go and get about a one-fourth more. I lost some of y'all in the church. I'm mad by myself. I ain't finna go posse up. Yeah, you mad? Because some of y'all so ignorant, you don't know the person you mad at got your deliverance. <laughs> I'm going to come back around here. I'm going to come back around here. The person you mad at might pay your house off. The person you're mad at might show you how to get a man and keep him. The person you're mad at, the person you really don't want to fool with because the enemy knows who to keep away from who so that there'll be no manifestation because the person you with ain't producing nothing. They don't want you to get with nobody else who is. How come the people who always got a problem with certain people is always people doing nothing and they mad at the folks doing something? Okay, I, my claps getting no. That's when you get wise. That's when you start getting wise. That's when you start opening your eyes and be like, wait a minute, hold up. Well, if you want to talk about this one, then let me look at what this person is doing. Hold up. You want to talk about giving, but let me see if this person ever in the line. I said this about a month and a half ago. I'm working the cameras. Let me slow down. Let me see, do they ever tie while they talking about it? Why are they talking about who's serving? Let me see if they're serving. Because people got a big talk, but when it comes to put the money down, when it comes to put that money, when it comes, and I ain't talking about money, when it comes to put that time down, when it comes to serving, when it comes to being nice to people, when it comes to seed sowing of goodness, that some people just don't have it. The only way that they're built and set up is to receive. If I got a, a person, a youth waving their hand in the back, I'm going to preach anyways. You reap what you sow. You won't forgive. People are going to come in your life. And when you mess up, they ain't going to forgive you. We can't be leaders and not forgive some of y'all. Can't be leaders and not embrace you when you come to the house of the Lord. Because we mad about something. Some of y'all ain't fit to be leaders. 
Because you're still mad about something five years ago. Let me get back to the word of God. For those of y'all that don't like real talk that deals with the real part of you. But I'll be remiss to be a pastor to tell you the truth. Let me prove to you your words of powerful scripture. Proverbs 18 and 21. I'm sticking with my time. Thank you, Elder Wood, for pushing. Pastor Harris, Proverbs 18 and 21. Real quick verse. Proverbs 18 and 20, 21. When you dare shout amen. Somebody shout, my mouth got me in trouble. But my mouth is getting ready to get me out. I'm going to speed up just a little bit. Proverbs 18 and 21. When you dare shout amen. Your words bring life with your spirit. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Life and death in the power of your what? Life and death in the power of your what? So which means, as my bishop Todd Hall would say, that on the tip of your tongue is your funeral or your future. Amen. Some of you are where you are because you spoke yourself there. Some of you are where you are because it came out your mouth. And I'm not around anybody that's speaking depth about anything concerning anything concerning me. I shall live. And the enemy's job is to make you talk crazy. Frustrate you so bad that you curse your own self. You don't need nobody else to curse you. Some of us, we curse our own selves. You don't need nobody else to speak to you. Some of us, we tear our own self down. You need nobody to be like, I curse you in the name of Jesus. No, you did it already. Yeah. Why? Because your symptoms don't line up with the promise. Yeah. Yeah. Because what you see is not what God said. Amen. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. I love it because we're talking about harvest and there is fruit after harvest. There is seed. I love it because it says that your tongue has a seed. And I told y'all in the beginning, which means that you're going to eat the fruit of the manifestation. If you speak life, you're going to eat the fruit of life. If you speak death, the fruit of it, come on, is going to be death. If you speak that I'm more than a conqueror, you're going to be more than a conqueror. If you can speak, I can have whatever I want. I can have whatever I say. You're going to have it. It's it's not just in your giving, it's in your speaking. It's not just in your prayer, it's in your speaking. It's not just in who you're connected with, but it's in your speaking. How do you speak about yourself? What do you say about yourself? I never have nothing. I never be nothing. Out of the heart, mouth speaking. Your mouth say whatever's in your heart, so you can't say, I didn't mean it. Because your heart spoke. What was in your mouth spoke what was in your heart, which means some people use it as, well, you know, I said something when I was angry. And when I when I said it, when I was angry, I didn't mean it. I understand it. But at that point, your heart was in anger. Can y'all get what I'm saying? Yo, so you really didn't mean what you were saying if you were peaceful. You really didn't mean what you were saying if your heart was in the right place. Since your mind was messed up, your heart spoke at the time how you felt. Y'all don't want to talk right. So you may really didn't mean it, but your heart at the time was angry. Your heart at the time was dysfunctional. Your heart at the time was offended. We got to learn not to speak when we mad. We got to learn not to speak when we offended. Because I'll say something that'll hurt your feelings. Y'all don't want to talk. I'll say something you'll have to be like, whew. When you're mad. When you're bitter. Because bitter people turn from bitter, it turns into anger. It's a seed. Everything has a seed. Look at your neighbor that looks bored and tell them everything has a seed. Come on, if they don't want to talk to you, find someone behind you and tell them everything has a seed. Whether positive or negative, the Bible says, come on, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, the smallest seed but grows to be one of the biggest trees. Come on, if you just believe with a small little amount of faith, how God can grow your faith into something that is big. But we want people to speak over our lives, but we won't speak over our own lives. Prophesy to me, Pastor. You got enough stored up work on those. 
You got enough word. Work, work, work on what God already said about you. Start speaking and wake up in the morning and speak affirmations over your own self. I'm gonna have whatever I say. I'm whatever I whatever I say gonna have. The devil won't have my day to day. Sister, sister Tina on the job ain't gonna make me mad today. Brother so and so, I'm gonna worship God in the right spirit. I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna be in the right spirit. Cause God told me some of us are wasting our emotions on stuff that don't matter. And stuff that does matter, we don't have enough strength to handle it because we gave all of our strength to something that didn't matter. I'm almost done. Back in the church day, we didn't move because our mama pinched us in church. And then when she pinched us, she said, I dare you to cry. I'm like, well, you just pinched me. I don't cry. She said, I don't care. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to hear a sound out of you. And so we turned it to mimes. That was mime dancing. Like, because all I heard was, you better not make a sound. And she, and she didn't move. The pastor didn't even know she had got pinched. Be like, I dare you, I dare you to cry. And not just pinch, but pinch and turn. <laughs> turn in one of them, them, them the worst. Anybody ever been pinched before? Pink, I call it Pinch into submission. I want to be like, my mama bruising me in church. You better not. You sure gonna get, you're gonna get a whooping. And y'all hate them whoopings. I'm sorry why I'm on here. I'm just gonna stop a few minutes and then I'm gonna go. Y'all hate them whoopings that say, I'm gonna whoop you when you get home. And you got two hours before you get home. For the two hours you tortured. My mama would leave us at the house, and we all was babysitting one another, and she'd be like, by the time I get off of work, so I'm going to whoop every last one of y'all. So we had to line up to get our whoopings. But my brother was a little smarter than me, David. He would go and get all the pillows, and he would come out with a behind about this big. And when she got home, he, he walked out to her. I'm like, David, you know how kids mind, and you know she's going to see them pillows behind her. He's like, but it ain't going to hurt. She walk in there, see them pillows, and she just bust out laughing. She said, boy, I can't stand you. You make, you make me sick. My sister never got whoopings because she always would hide for hours. As soon as she came in, she would slide up under the bed, and my mama couldn't reach her. And so there was times I saw my mama pick up a whole bed and be like, I'm going to get you to die. What's wrong with our, our, our generation is we mistake discipline for abuse. I got, I got somebody nodding their head over there. It's control. I turned out just okay. Everybody else get turned out all right. Because you got discipline. But this generation, oh, I got the cameraman waving, everybody. We still alive, right? We still arrive, but, but we want to say discipline is abuse. We want to say order is control. So I'm not going to do what the pastor say because they try to control me. But the Bible says obey them that have rule over you. But because we've been loved wrong and because we've been abused, we don't understand what submission really is. So when we're love wrong, we'll say anything. Come on, they better not tell me to do this because all your life you've been a part of something that told you you're going to do this and you better do this and you better not do this and if you don't do this, then you're going to hell. Amen. Then when you get with somebody that really love you, you miss it. Amen. When you get with a man that, whoop, that really want to treat you right, you still stuck on Johnny. Y'all don't want to talk right. I'm in the Bible that you can't receive love. When you get to a church that the, lie, the pastors love you right, you can't receive them in love because you were somewhere where you were abused. So we can say we're red and you wear green. Which moves you over into rebellion. Because you don't respect who you felt like you've been abused from. Okay. Somebody said, say it for the people in the back. I'm going to come back up over here. You shall eat the fruit of whatever you speak out your mouth. If you speak bitterness, you better go on and taste that bitter lemon. Because it's coming back to you. What people don't understand is that even when you've been forgiven, that doesn't take away the consequence. J. 
Just because you said you sorry don't mean that consequence skipped over you. There was times I was like, Mama, I'm sorry, Mama, I'm sorry, Mama, I'm sorry, Mama, and that belt was still going. I said, I'm going to wear my mama out. I turned circles all the way. I'll be turning like this. And she's like, you better be still. There are still consequences because I have to show you that God shows us that, hey, I'm not playing. I'm going to accept you back and I'm going to forgive you. But that doesn't mean I remove the consequence for whatever it is. Because some of us, we move over into grace and feel like we can do anything and get into heaven. Y'all going to be like that Mimi on the YouTube channel where they all, when y'all seen it, they were all walking up in the pearly gates. And they was walking up them steps and two made it in. One made it in. And as soon as the next two stepped over, the whole thing <laughs> fell down. So I live as if God is judging me every day. I live as if I mess up. God, I ask for forgiveness not to stay where I am, but I made a mistake so I won't do it again. I live with a sorrowful fear. Some of us, we're not sorry for anything that we do. Thank y'all for talking, even if y'all really not with it. I'm going to close real good. I'm looking at the time. I'm going to close real good with something real good. Somebody say she's going to close real good. For those of y'all didn't like the first part, hopefully you last like the last 15 minutes of this message. Tell somebody, say, shut up. Tell them, say, you're messing up your blessings. Tell them, say, be quiet. Tell them, everybody don't need to know who you don't like. I don't like that. But what if somebody don't like your big head? saying everything you think. If you would shut your mouth, the devil wouldn't have anything to work with. I know y'all weren't going to clap. We wouldn't have nothing to work with. As soon as he find out what you said, because he ain't like God. Come on. He can't be everywhere. He only works through what you say. When he finds out what you say, he go to work. I got a headache. Oh, let me go to work. Let me work on it even more. Amen. He only works off. Somebody said the enemy works off what I say. And you got to learn to say things that have rebuking power. Y'all don't want to talk, right? I don't care what it looks like. I rebuke it out of my mouth in the name of Jesus. My mama used to rebuke everything. I was scared at times when I'd come home and wasn't acting right. She'll look at me and she'll say, I ain't talking to you right now. I'm talking to that spirit in you. And you will come subject in this house because if you under my roof and you eat my food. I ain't no real parents in here. We're going to serve the Lord in this house. We ain't serving Buddha. We ain't got no different traditions of, of Christianity or different religions. And you Buddha and you Catholic. No, we're going to serve the Lord in this house. You give your kids too many options. Oh, y'all don't want to talk right. You don't want to eat macaroni, hamburger helper, you won't be eating tonight. That's why mothers don't come to church because this generation has gone crazy. They don't want to come and hear this mess. Talk back to your mama. The usher was able to get your child. Now we get mad when somebody try to correct. I, woo, I almost said something. It takes a village to raise a child. Everybody ain't going to hurt your child. Everybody don't dislike you. It's some people that love you and try to help you. But everybody time somebody try to help you, you open your big mouth and you send your help out the door. There's some parents in this house, if they don't mind me saying, that, that brought their kids to Pastor Harris and say, handle it. Now, everybody don't do that. Y'all got husbands and stuff. Y'all got the only do handle. It's all right. Handle this. Y'all don't want to talk right. But because we want to handle our own and we don't want anybody else to say anything about our kids. Am I cleaning the house today or on a Sunday morning? That's mine. But yours tearing up everything. I had 
had some ushers in church. I couldn't stand to this day. I had that the Lord forgive me. I said, that's so long ago. Well, sister so-and-so in her white clothes and them usher shoes walk over there, and you got gum, she'll just stick her hand out. I'll be like, and hey, you want what? But I learned when she peached to me to spit that gum. It came out with force. Amen. And then tell you, tell your mama after church, I, I did it. I was so scared I didn't tell her. We've gotten out of hand. We've lost respect for elders. Okay, y'all don't want to talk right on a Sunday morning. We've lost respect for the church. We've lost respect for leadership. You don't talk back to your mama. Y'all don't want to talk, right? The Bible tells us about how we're supposed to treat our parents. So our days will be long. So a lot of kids are dying because they're disrespectful. And the reason they're dying early is because you don't have parents to teach them. You don't be disrespectful to the person that brought you in the world. I didn't know what that mean. My mama said, I brought you in this world. And one day she did. I thought I was going to buck up against her because I was 17. I was finna be 18. And I had a little boyfriend at the house. Me and my boyfriend. I got embarrassed. I'm still embarrassed. And I'm 37 years old. Me and my brother David, because we was the bashing digs together. He was way worse than me, but I thank God for grace and deliverance. Ooh. I thought, well, I don't know what we were going to do with him. But anyways, we were fighting, and we knocked one of my mama good spoons off the wall. And she was outside in the yard. How mama's here so far away? She was in there in 30 seconds. She was working in the yard. And when that's, we were playing and wrestling, when I knocked that spoon off the wall, I looked at him. He looked at me. My boyfriend looked at me. We all looking at each other. By the time we got through looking, she was standing in the door. And she said, I'm sick and tired of y'all fighting. Y'all know how sisters and brothers fight. Y'all fighting all the time. And I was like, it wasn't me. It was David. I didn't do nothing. She said, you better not talk back to me. I said, mm, whatever. I rolled my eyes, babe. Before I know it, I was in the kitchen. I was in the washroom. I... She said, you ain't grown. She said, you want me to show you grown? She said, she said, I'll show you grown. She said, I ain't going to hurt you, Lord. Help me not to hurt the child. But my mama put her hands up like this at 17 years old. I said, mama, I can't fight you. She said, you finna fight today. <laughs> she said, you going to fight. The Before I know it, my mama had uppercut me. Boop, boop, boop. I, I was like, I didn't know she was. I was on that wall in that washroom. I was embarrassed. My soul was hanging down. My boy was like, your mama just whoop your butt. <laughs> you see, but y'all, 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 I ain't talking about hurting. I ain't talking about abuse. I'm talking about discipline. You don't hurt your sister and your brother. You don't fight your sister and your brother. Y'all live in the same house, and we're not going to be against one another. We're going to be for one another. In the kingdom, church, we ain't going to be against one another. We don't fight our sisters and our brothers. Y'all don't want to talk right. Because you were taught that in your house, it was okay. You know, I was in your house. That is house divided against itself. Can't stand. Somebody say, not here. Not here. My, my, I, I, I have, me and my sister, if, if we argue, we don't come against another enemy yeah. and I jump on the other side. If somebody said they was messing with my little sister, I'm not, I'm not a fighter, but you, 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 and especially when my sister don't mess with nobody and she ain't finna fight nobody. You saw another time we're supposed to protect one another in the body of Christ. But we got too many assailants in the body of Christ. We got too many assassinators in the body of Christ that we're killing our own wounded. How you see somebody bleeding and you turn around and put salt on their wound instead of love. You turn around and talk about them instead of helping them up. Y'all don't want to talk right. That's what true love is about. That's what it's about. Okay. Amen. Five minutes, are y'all going to be okay? Y'all going to be okay with five minutes? 1247? Yes, Elder Wood said okay, Miss Amos said okay, so the rest of y'all don't worry. So, 
I'm closing with this because the Lord told me to tell you guys after we have made it through all of that, that what he's getting ready to do in your life, he's going to do it in the midst of affliction. You about to get blessed in the midst of your haters. You about to get blessed in the midst of folks that said you could never come back from what, what, what happened to you, what, what happened to you in your life. God's about to show the very people that said you what going to be nothing. He's about to put it in their face in the midst of adversary, in the midst of affliction. My closing scripture today, I want to begin to talk to you about the Exodus and what they said the children of Israel, they had hard taskmasters and the enemies came up against them and the one word because I don't have time to go there the reason they came up against them is says because they begin to grow I come to tell you the reason the enemy is on your trail is because he see you growing the reason the enemy won't slack up off of you is because he see you multiplying the reason the enemy won't let you breathe is because he see you moving growing and flowing the reason you keep going through this after this and that after that get one breather gotta go back down in the water come up, get a little breather, gotta go through another trial. Come back up and get a little breather and gotta go through another situation. It's because the enemy has noticed that you're growing. The enemy has noticed that you got positive motive. The enemy has noticed that you're not the same person. God told me last week, he said, when the enemy looks for you, Latoya, they will not be able to find you because you're not in the same place. Some of y'all get caught by the enemy because you're stagnant and you don't move. He know every move that you're going to make. You're going to be looking for me and I'm going to be over there. You're going to be looking for me and I'm going to be somewhere else. The enemy is not going to be able to find you in this season. The Bible says in Exodus, he said that we saw that they were getting great. We saw that they were getting powerful. We saw the kingdom church moving. We saw Pastor Darius and Latoya Harris preaching up under pressure. We saw them teaching up under people who didn't like them. We saw them pressing and coming to the house of God while they had problems at home. Since we saw their growth, we got to attack them. Every attack is another level. And some of y'all can't see that. Uh, that some of y'all want to get somewhere so fast, but you don't, you don't factor in spiritual warfare. You don't factor in. You don't be great without having to go through something. You're not powerful without having to go through something. You're not great and not have to go through the trenches. Because once you get there, you got to have power to stay there. Once you get there, you got to have power to succeed. Once you get there, you got to have power over the enemy. And if you haven't learned spiritual warfare, you're going to get yourself whooped. Exodus and we on our way up out of here to exit. Exodus quickly turn your Bibles. I believe it's going to be, it's one quick verse and this is the verse I'm going to ride out on. I'm going to hoop to y'all five minutes and we're going to go home. Somebody look and say, God is getting ready to snatch me out of some things. Come on, tell them to say, the more people talk about me, tell them to say, the more I'm going to grow. Tell them to say, the more that they put stuff on me, is the more doors are going to begin to open. I wish I had the right church. And what the enemy does not understand is that more pressure calls me to praise God more. What the enemy does not understand is the more you put me down, is the more I put them up. What the enemy does not understand is the more you put your mouth on me, is the more I'm going to bless God. What the enemy does not understand, the more you oppress me, the more I'm a worshiper. The more you oppress me, the more I'm going to come to church. The Bible says in Exodus, because they said they made them hard taskmasters. Because some people just don't want to make it easy for you. Y'all don't want to talk, right? Have you ever met people that every time you try to do something, they are a hindrance to the move of God? Every time you try to grow, they got something negative to say. Every time you try to move forward, they keep reminding you.
reminding you of your past. And God told me to tell the kingdom church today. He said, stop seeding your past and start seeding into your future. He said, your past is your past. I wish I had 20 hyper people that are stand to your feet and shout with me, my past is my past. Tell them, say, don't bring it up no more. Tell them, say, God has forgiven me and he has put it in the sea of forgetfulness. Tell somebody my past is my past. Tell them I did it back then. But say I'm cleared right now. Stop bringing up my mess. Stop bringing up what I said. Stop bringing up what I done. Tell somebody to tell. Say the more that they oppress me is the more I'm going to press in. Look at someone behind you and say the more that they put their mouth on you is the more that God's going to bless you. The Bible says that the children of Israel, they made it hard for them to build. They gave them hard stuff to build houses with. Have you ever been in a hard situation that all you had was scraps? They only left you what was left. They only left you the scraps of things. They only left you a little bit, but I come to tell you today, the more that the enemy press you, is the more that God's going to bless you. High five a neighbor and tell your neighbor, say the more that the enemy press you, is the more that God's going to bless you. Exodus the first chapter and the twelfth verse says, it says, but the more that they afflicted them. I'm going to say it again because I like the way it sounds. But the more that they afflicted them, the more they multiply. Take my job. I'm going to multiply. Lie on me. I'm going to multiply. Make it hard for me. I'm going to make it hard. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't know how strong I am. If it wasn't for the devil, you wouldn't know how wise you are. If it wasn't for your affliction, if it wasn't for your trial, I wish I had the right church on a Sunday morning. If it wasn't for your haters, they didn't know that the more they pressed, but the more God blessed. The more they pressed, the more God favored you. The more they pressed, the more God promoted you. The more they pressed, doors opened up. Keep talking about me. Keep saying what you want to say. Keep doing how you want to do. Keep acting how you acting. Because the more, the more you make it hard for me, it's the more that God blesses me. Some people are mad simply because it's you. Some people are mad simply because it's not them. Some folks are mad simply because God decided to, to sprinkle a little anointing over your life and the enemy will get in them to hinder you and to block you and try to stop you. But the Bible says the more, the more they afflicted him, the more they multiply. They didn't just multiply, but they grew. I want to tell you today, there's a difference between healthy growth. There's a difference between growing and swelling. There's a difference between getting bigger and getting healthier. There's a difference between getting more food and actually having muscles. But the Bible says that they grew not just in numbers. I don't want a church full of numbers, but I want a church that's healthy and growing. Healthy in their money. Healthy in their spirituality. Healthy in their character. We ain't gonna be a bunch of mean worshipers. A bunch of mean praisers. Can't speak to 
my neighbor. Uh, and you got to understand uh, that people who are bitter uh, and people who are mean, uh, they don't like themselves. Uh, what they're saying is, uh, I see something in you uh, that's not in me. Uh, I see something in you uh, that I can't obtain. Uh, but I come to tell you uh, the same anointing uh, that was back in the book of Exodus uh, and the first chapter, uh, that same anointing uh, is here today uh, at the kingdom church. Uh, the more they oppress you, uh, the more uh, that they push you down. Uh, God says, I'm getting ready uh, to open the doors. Uh, wide open. Tell somebody say open wide. Open your mouth and bless him all over the house. Tell somebody God's getting ready to open the door open wide. Tell them, say, this next door. Y'all yeah, prophesying right here. Tell them, say, this next door. Tell them, say, this next door huh, that God's getting ready to open. Huh, it's going to open all the doors. Huh. I'm sorry, but I feel like screaming and hollering. Huh. This next door, huh, I receive it for myself. Huh, that God's getting ready to open for you. Huh. It's going to open up doors huh, for the rest of your life. Y'all ain't happy about it. Y'all ain't happy about it. This next blessing is generational blessing. This next blessing is it won't stop. God said, I told him I'm thankful for doors. I'm thankful for opportunities. But God says, Latoya, he said, get ready for a door that is everlasting. Get ready for a door that will open up the windows of heaven over your life. You don't need just that door. You don't need a friend's door. You don't need another person's door. But God said, I'm going to give you a door that's getting ready to blow the mind of folks who say they ain't got nothing. They ain't going to be nothing. They won't have nothing. I'm about to show them that my hand was upon your life the whole time. Who they hid in the back. They hid David in the back. They did not want nobody to see the little dirty shepherd boy. They didn't want nobody to see the one that was serving. You got to be careful not to serve to be seen. Uh, because if you serve to be seen, uh, you're going to get looked over. Uh, if you serve and your heart and not in the right place, uh, you're going to see someone beside you uh, that never got their name called, uh, that never said a word. Uh, God will take a person uh, who's full of humility uh, and he'll pick them up and say, uh, because they kept their mouth closed, uh, because they knew when to shut up, uh, they knew when to forgive. Uh, the bigger person Person, huh, is the person huh, who knows how to forgive. Huh? The bigger person huh, who's more mature huh, is the person huh, who says it's okay. Huh? I will huh, accept your apology. Huh? And God told me to tell you, huh, he said, get this church ready huh, because I'm sending people back huh, who did not apologize. Huh? But you got to be huh, the bigger person huh, that say it's that you made me cry. It's all right that you tried to hinder me. It's all right that you tried to let the enemy use you to hinder my anointing, to hinder your progress. You got to tell some folks, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for letting the enemy use you. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't know who I am. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am. I speak it out of my mouth that I am the head and not the tail. Shake your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor on a Sunday morning, say, neighbor, say nothing can stop 
me uh, in this season. Uh, Y'all ain't happy about it. Uh, tell somebody behind you uh, and get out your seat because uh, I'm coming to a close. Uh, tell them, say, nobody uh, can stop me. Uh, say, what well, God's getting ready uh, to do in my life. Uh, say, not a family member, uh, not a wife, uh, not a husband, uh, not your kids, uh, not a co-worker, uh, and not other folks, uh, but even myself. Uh, I move myself because uh, it's not always uh, other people. Uh, sometimes uh, it's yourself uh, that's in the way. Uh, I wish I had the right church uh, that understood today uh, that sometimes self uh, can hold you back. Uh, sometimes self uh, can keep you in fear, my God. Sometimes self uh, can keep you in lack. Uh, sometimes self uh, uh, keep you bondage. Uh, but God told me to tell you today, uh, free at last. Uh, thank God Almighty uh, that you're free at last. Uh, well, what you're talking about, Pastor? Uh, I'm talking about uh, you're free from what they got to say about you. You're free uh, from people's emotions. Uh, you're free uh, from what used to trip you up. Uh, you're going to step over uh, what used to break you down. Uh, you're going to run over uh, what used to make you cry. Uh, you're going to lift your head up and say, uh, good fight, devil. Uh, good try, devil. Uh, but what you did, uh, you made me stronger. Uh, I'm wiser. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, and they were grieved uh, because the children uh, of Israel, 13, I believe it said they grew. Uh, they were intimidated. Uh, they were frustrated. Uh, see, the enemy gets mad uh, when he puts bait out there and you don't take it. He gets mad when he puts someone in your way and you didn't give up. He gets mad when he starts a rumor about you and you be like, I don't care. He gets offended when he try to oppress you. Not knowing that I went down in depression. Huh? But by the time God met me at my lowest place. Oh! Oh! Well, I went way down. I almost got stuck there. Some of y'all almost got stuck there. But while I was down there, I had a little talk with Jesus. And I told him all about my troubles. And he heard. I said, Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, set me free. Jesus, look at somebody and said, I had a talk with Jesus. I had a talk with Jesus. And I told him about my troubles. And when I told him about my troubles, bent over, said, Depressed, lonely, sick, so strengthened, I can't move. You couldn't pray. You couldn't fast. You couldn't get to church. But while you were down there, you went into depression and you came up with praise. Tell somebody, I've had a talk with Jesus. I had a talk with Jesus. I had a with Jesus and Jesus said all oh, this well keep your head up keep your hands raised I dare you to lift your hands because I feel the glory of the Lord in this place lift up your hands What you did is not going to work. The praising sung it this morning. It did not work. I came out with my praise. I came out with worship. I came out dancing. I came out shouting. I came out singing. I came out preaching. I came out teaching. Better, 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 better. I'm better. Tell somebody I'm better. Tell somebody I'm better. I'm better. I'm better. 
I'm better. You were supposed to die in it, but I'm better. You were supposed to not get up, but I'm better. You were supposed to throw in the towel, but I'm better. You were supposed to give up, but you're better. You were supposed to stop coming to church, but you're better. Satan is after what's in you. He's after what's in you. He's after what's in you. He's after your praise. He's after your worship. He's after your giving. We are in a season huh, where Satan is trying to attack huh, our giving. Huh, but I hear by God. Huh, God said if you keep on giving, huh, I'm about to open doors. I'm not about to, but I already have. I dare you to shout glory. who got this message don't need to be pumped upon. They already dancing. God says, I'm about to move every hindrance out your life. You won't have to move them. Y'all know I ain't got no sense. But he said, I'm going to do the work. Touch not my anointing. Do my prophet no home. Tell somebody I believe I'm something to God. Say when you mess with me, it's like messing with God. Say because I'm his child. I'm his daughter. Say, say I am the one that made it out on time. I want everybody in this house not to dance just because I asked you to because that would be control. I want you to praise God because you know that where you're headed, there are no more chains on you. You are free in the name of Jesus. On the count of three, I want you to clap, I want you to yell, and I want you to dance. Because the Bible says that when they ran around the walls of Jericho seven times, that the walls begin to fall down. And I see some walls in the Spirit of God falling in this place. I dare you all over the house, on the count of three, somebody already praising. One, two, one, two, three, and... to take you out and you were in your sleep 
and you came up out your sleep and you begin to say, Jesus, Lord, help me. God says, I'm getting ready to heal your body. You came today for a miracle in your body. You came today for whatever symptom is going on. God says, your faith has touched me because you look past your symptom and you kept believing God. God says, I'm going in the bloodline and I'm getting ready to curse something that tried to come down through the bloodline. When I lay my hands up on you, God said, the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to burn it out. Do I got any believers or do I got lookers? I need you to raise your praise because God's getting ready to give hope.